So I've also got this other unit here, another Herner, HST-S315. Also not working apparently. Now, my first observation when I first got this is the way this is set up. This cable was being clamped down through the box and it's all squashed right here. That's really bad. So that needs cutting off and redoing and they need to not do that because that is really not good for it. That's going to destroy the cable and potentially short it out. So that's the first thing. I need to fix that before I even power it up. But from inspecting the cables, these feel like they're gone. Just up here, it's got a bit of stretch to it. Do the same here, it's also got a bit of stretch to it. So I think they're failed right into the entry to these plugs, which is a bit of a pain. It's also a bit of a cut into there as well. Now I actually have some replacement wires. I can put some better wires on these um, and solder those in. Won't be original, but it'll be close enough. And I think the wire I use is better than the original wire, so um, yeah, that'll be fixing too, I think. I'm pretty sure that's what's wrong, but the first thing I need to do is power it up with this. Now this actually does plug in. I've been trying to unplug it. I can't actually unplug it. It's got like a bayonet fitting on here. Um, you can see what it's supposed to be like here. It's got like a ridge around it. You can see it. So it's like a bayonet fitting on there. You push it in and you turn it and it will kind of lock in. And this has got a bit of movement in it. See, it is moving slightly, but I can't get the thing to release. So I'm not sure what the story is there. I can't get it to release. <laughs> and really to fix that cable, I need to get the thing off so I can test it properly. So that's the piece of wire I cut off where it's damaged. I found it's damaged in two places. So I'll cut both off. There's damage here, damage there. So I'll cut off that because it's that. Also, I noticed inspecting further, this, this wire is pulled out of the cable gland. Had this um, sleeve over it before, but it was actually sitting like that. So I'm going to open this box up, make sure this wires have been pulled out because that's how it was. It was actually that far out. It doesn't go any further than that. So I need to open this up and check that as well. Okay, I've got the screws out. What we got to find? Yeah, that's okay. It's just that live wire's pulled a little bit, but it's that's one's actually stopped it from pulling right out. It's the live wire. It's probably not a good thing, is it? Um, but the other ones just go straight through, so you can only pull so far. It all seems okay. I think I'll just put that back in the gland. Maybe I'll put a cable tie around the inside on both sides, so it can't pull out. That'd be a better way of doing it, wouldn't it? Then you've got double security. I'll do that. All right, so that's that done. Cable ties around both those wires, top and bottom. And this gland was actually, this top one was actually loose, that was spinning. And I was trying to do this outer gland. The whole thing was unscrewing, so even that was loose, so I need to tighten it up properly. I've screwed it back in by hand, but I need to get a little spanner on that to get it nice and tight. So that's it's going to go. I'll put it back in like that. Nice sleep inside the wires. No issues there with it being pulled anymore. I'm just about to plug the power into it. Now I'm comfortable with the, the wiring is at least relatively safe. It's as safe as I can check it for anyway. Let's plug the power in. Make sure the breaker is enabled. That is on. So that should all work. If I turn the switch on, it should turn on. It does. Beeper sounds a bit sick. It's detected a fitting. That's interesting. Because I actually thought it wasn't going to detect anything. Oh no, there we go. That is breaking. Yep, sure enough. Broken wires on this one. And then... Push them together. Yep, both both broken. Both those wires are broken. That's confirmed. So I'm not going to even try powering it right now. I'll replace those wires first, and then then I'll test it and see what happens. Simple job, usual thing. All right, so I managed to get the plug off. That was fun. As <laughs> you use some poly grips and a spanner and something soft around it to help it. But anyway, so I've got one wire there. Not quite sure which pin it is, I've forgotten. That one there. That pin there. Give it a pull, it's broken. Release it, comes back. Yep, that one's broken. So now we check the other one. It's 
Squeeze it, it's back, barely. Release it, it's broken. Yep, both wires are broken, as expected. Let's replace them. So basically you just release the gland so you, the wire can spin, then you unscrew that and then you slide the thing out. And there's the piece, which in this case is using a grub screw. The ones I've had previously were soldered. So this is actually even easier to fix than the previous ones. That's good. Same deal there. Grub screw. Lovely. What's that yellow end? So there we have a resistor. What size is that resistor? This cable gland's got a binding. That's alright. Even those look like they've been digging in quite a bit. Uh, what's that resistor there? Can't see it. Is it a green, black, black or something? I can't quite see what it actually is. Let's measure it. Just for reference sake, in case it ever fails. Of course the top two pins. 200k. So it's a uh, red, black, black then. Yes it is. Red, black, black, orange, brown. This fits in your wires to this thing. This is going to be easy as soon as I have to solder it. This is a special wire purchased for doing this kind of job. It's double insulated silicon wire. It's slightly thicker than the original. A bit more robust. We'll use this. As long as I can get it into these brass fittings, this will, get, this will be alright. Now when I've had to do the other ones which are, are soldered fittings, those are soldered ones, the other type, the other ones are done which are like the Venedex ones, I think they were. I've had to drill that hole out a bit to get the wire in. So we'll see if this goes. I'm going to take the um, grub screw out of that, or loosen the grub screw right out, strip some of this off and see if I can get it in there. Hopefully I can. Hopefully. So the grub screw is a 1.5mm. Look at that, lovely. So I'll strip some of this wire off and see if I can actually get it in there. Where's my stripper? Well, it's only barely going in, that's not even soldered yet. Uh, I mean, if I don't solder it, it'll go in, but that's not exactly ideal. I might have to drill these out as well then, just a little bit. Just to make them just like the next size up. So I'll go and do that. It's not a big deal, it's only a small detail. It doesn't take much effort at all, just a little quick drill. And off we go. So that one's actually stuck. There we go. Let's make sure the grub screw is not in the way. Don't drill through the grub screw. Going not halfway from the outside. Make sure it doesn't fall out as well, because that'd be bad. There you go. Then it's definitely out of the way. Go and get those drilled out. Then I'll put the new wire in. In fact, I'm just looking now. I was thinking, oh, let's check the other end now, because I have to do something with that end as well. I'm just trying to figure out how to get the other end attached. I don't see how that goes together. This outer piece is one piece. I don't see how this goes. I can't actually see how to get this apart. Hmm. I need to figure that out before I do the other end. In case I have to shorten these wires instead, which isn't so good. Well, so far I can't figure out how to get this plug apart. And the annoying thing is these wires are actually fraying inside here. So, I can see it in there or not, probably can't, but this wire's actually frayed a little bit in there. I can see, maybe you can see that one on the right hand side. So these actually do need redoing. But first thing I have to do is figure out how to get the plug apart. So since those wires are frayed, I thought I'd better check the blue plug and pull this one apart and have a look. And this one has also got some fraying wires in there. Some strands that are stray, which are close to touching the other terminal. I'm pretty sure that's not good. Can't say I found this design. Don't know, can you see the stray wires there? It's like it could potentially touch together. The stray wires there on this one. If they both turned a little bit, they could both touch. That's not good. And there's a resistor there too. I need to figure out how to get these plugs apart because they're both need fixing. So I've got the pin out. I just had to get a really good push and it popped out. It's got like a locking collar thing there. But these pins are crimped. The only way to really replace the wires is replace the whole pin. 
or you solder wire in inside the plug, which is not great. So on one end, it's really easy to fix with the grub screw to attach its plug, and on this end, well, it's a bit of a nightmare really. So I'm thinking what I'm going to have to do is to basically solder this to get rid of those stray wires and shove them back in. <laughs> solder, maybe put some insulating material over them, maybe I can put some heat shrink over them, I'm quite sure, just to cover them a bit better. I don't like this setup. Shove them back in again and then cut these ones shorter and hopefully the break is right there and it's only going to lose a little bit of length and just cut them off, redo them. For now, I think that's probably going to be the best way of doing it. That's where it's gone right there, I bet you. Now, I'd like to put the new wire in, but this is a problem. I mean, yes, I could do it. I could probably, like, cut it off, say, there, solder it all, solder the new wire onto it, and then heat shrink all that. I mean, that it is doable, but I think I'm not to the point where I need to do that there. I think I should have solder this to make it safe so it's not going to fray any further and break anymore cut the end off and just make the cable slightly shorter for the time being i reckon that's the way to go and do the same thing on the blue one as well pop those pins out solder those wires and put some heat shrink on them to protect them so they don't short out it's not very well made i have to say the vinidex ones they've got screw terminals on them so you can actually just unscrew take the wire out plug you know put a new wire in but then the other end is soldered but that's not that big a deal so they're kind of opposite each other. You kind of need these ends on the Vinidex ones <laughs> with the Vinidex plugs on these ones. Not a fan. Not a fan. I mean, the other way to do it is to actually completely swap the plug. So we've got this plug on this end. I mean, you could always just completely change the whole plug arrangement to be a different type. Obviously, there's a waterproof plug, so you have to make sure you use something equivalent. But that could be done. And that might be the only option really going forward is to swap the plug with different type. But then if you ever replace the cable, you have to make sure that new cable has the right plug put on it. So that will become a problem. It's not really something you want to do. I mean, if you can get these connectors, find out what these are. It's got GTC marked on the side of it, as does the other half. Find out what these plugs actually are. Maybe you can get replacement connectors. Maybe that'd be another way to go, try and get some of those, but not easy, a bit of a pain. Yeah, I'm gonna fix this up and move on. So I pulled the blue plug apart and that's what the wires look like. But looks like that, they weren't even crimped, look. They're not even pushed into the crimp. That's a manufacturing defect. Yeah, that's really bad. That is really bad. Right, so I soldered these ends here so there's no stray wires anymore. There's no stray stragglers. Let's put some heat shrink over these ends. So I'm just going to just go over, I think. Might be take a bit of finessing. But that will just go over. And I'll make sure then it's got heat shrink over it as well. So if it does get any more stray ones appearing, um, it shouldn't do, but you never know, it might. I'll heat shrink just that little bit on the end and make sure they're all good. Right, that's that one done. Put it back together. So I'll just grab the wire, gave it a pull, and you can see that it's broken right there. And I'll do the same thing with the other one, I'll show you that as well, this one's also broken. Get a pull. Same point, right there. As expected, so I'm going to cut them off right there and re-terminate them. Alright, so I've just soldered that up. Let's put it back together, let's do it as is. Just slightly shorter than the original. It's hard to judge how tight to do those up. It's a shame I couldn't use the original wire. I mean, not really. That's a little bit long. Trim it down slightly. This will cut it. A bit of strands of wire in the bottom of that one. Okay, that's better. Anyway. Hard to judge how tight to do it. Anyway, oh, that one's a bit straight through that cable. That's not good, is it? I guess I'll do that one again. Should I put glands on those instead? Some uh, ferrules? Yeah, I should put ferrules in them. I'm going to get the wire out. Oh, great. Put ferrules on them, I think. 
Right, so I'm going to use ferrules instead, since as these little grub screws tend to be biting into the wires and breaking them. This will at least make it more robust, because now it's being pinched instead of cut through. Another example of the manufacturer not necessarily doing the best job. Right, I trust that a little bit more now. Right, that's those with ferrules on. Hmm, interesting design. Right, so we check these resistances. Now I've done those cable repairs. See if I've successfully done the cable repairs. 0.2 ohms, right. Let's give the cable a move around and give it a stretch and that sort of stuff, make sure it's behaving. Yep. Cool, that's that one. Let's check the other side. Up in there. 0.2 ohms again. Same deal, give it a stretch. Yep. That's all good. That cable is now fixed. Happy with that. Now whilst I've got it in resistance mode, let's measure the resistor across this one. It's the blue cable. So this is here and the blue cable was 91k. Right, let's try testing it. Let's see what we get. Now it's all back together. Turn the power on. See if it detects the cable or not. It does, it does detect the fitting. Let's wiggle the wire around in case any other problems we haven't noticed yet. Okay, that all seems fine. Let's try doing a weld. Let's see what voltage we get. One hundred volts. No worries at all. That's working fine. That's all good. It's fixed.